Now on Sunrise, a section of 494 is back open in the South Metro after a deadly incident on the freeway. Police say a man was shooting a gun at oncoming traffic. We talked to an eyewitness who was there as this chaotic scene unfolded. Courtroom decisions what the judge in Derek Chauvin's case is expected to announce today that could reshape the future of the trial. Three feet or six? The CDC pulling out the ruler to possibly make major changes to your kid's school day. Happy Friday weather. Enjoy the mild and sunny stretch this weekend before pattern change next week. And return to the stage. The Twin Cities first outdoor summer concert series is announced. The local legend who will be kicking things off. It's Friday, March 19th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Hey Sunrisers, it has been a long winter, but tomorrow is the first day of spring. And we're feeling it this morning, just like that gift there. So with temps in the 60s tomorrow, we want to know what you have planned for the weekend. Let us know. Use your favorite hashtag sunrisers. We're always so nosy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We need to know because we are also <laughs> looking for ideas because, I mean, the best thing we could come up with between the four of us is guys going to take a 10 minute walk. He's so going to open his windows. Too. We need help. Yeah. We need yeah, help. We need help. Send, send a gift too. a funny one. I don't know. <laughs> Do a little dance. That it's could be spring a tomorrow. Come on, guys, cheer up. Well, we're happy. All right. Well, I can't tell you guys are happy. <laughs> well, your idea brought me down. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, so much to do this weekend. It's almost like I'm overwhelmed, right? We have the beautiful weather. Uh, 32, it's going to be clear and it's going to feel uh, uh, again like 32 as you step outside. Winds are just so calm out there, not enough to uh, add insult to injury this morning. So actually feeling like the air temperature uh, getting out of the door. So temperatures actually will be warming up pretty quickly today. Once that sun comes out, we'll just see that clear, uh, crystal clear blue skies with lots of sun today, which means warming will be warming pretty rapidly going up to the mid 50s and again, waking up to temperatures below freezing. So just to show you, uh, we'll have those low lows and high highs. All right, spring like today, winds picking up tomorrow and clouds and sprinkles on Sunday. We have some changes in store early next week. And unfortunately, we do have some early on uh, traffic incidents to talk about. There was a crash here, a little fender bender. You can see the flares out along 44 and uh, Highway 100 down in the Southwest Metro this morning. Not causing too bad of a slowdown, but something to be mindful of if that's your route. Uh, we'll give you a check of the map. You can check your own route. We also had another crash uh, not too far from that along the stretch of 169. That one already cleared, so ignore that crash icon. And uh, some good news. 494 is actually back open. This portion of 494 in the Bloomington area after a really scary situation involving a man firing shots from a bridge in that area. And Kaya Edwards, she's live in Bloomington where it all happened. Kaya, what can you tell us? Alicia, we're on the pedestrian bridge here at 78th Street and 2nd Avenue. Things are calm. Traffic is moving and it's a total contrast to what we saw last night. Here's what we know. Bloomington and Richfield police responded at around 615 yesterday evening. They spotted a man firing shots from the pedestrian bridge. One Bloomington officer at one point fired his gun. Police say over the next 10 minutes, the man kept firing shots as he climbed to the outside of the safety fencing. They say he ultimately died by suicide. As for witnesses, one man tells us what he saw before police arrived. It was a guy climbing up on top, and my initial thoughts were, don't jump, I thought he was committing suicide. It looked like a Glock or something in his hand. He's climbing on top of the fence. That's what I was thinking he was setting up to do, like getting in a position to start shooting down. And I'm glad I rolled past that. And then when we came back from this boxing gym, all the freeways were shut down. Yeah, and roads did reopen at around 2 o'clock this morning, so overnight. And Alicia, you could probably see in that video just how backed up it was yesterday. Yeah, and again, it is back open this morning. So, Kaya, thanks for that report. This morning, the judge in the Derek Chauvin murder trial is expected to make some big decisions that could impact how and when the case moves forward. Jennifer Austin joins us live to break down what's happening. Jennifer, good morning. 
Yeah, good morning. This morning, the judge will decide whether to delay or move the trial. The defense requested that happen after the city of Minneapolis's $27 million settlement with George Floyd's family. Experts we've spoken with do not think the judge will grant that request, especially now that we're just two people away from a full jury. Other things we'll be watching for. Judge Cahill will make some critical decisions involving evidence and witnesses for the trial. He is considering letting Derek Chauvin's attorney use parts of a 2019 incident involving George Floyd as evidence. Chauvin's attorney wants to use it as part of his argument that George Floyd died from a drug overdose rather than from Chauvin's knee on his neck. Judge Cahill has said he would not let the entire video be used, but now even that could change if he also chooses to allow testimony from a witness that helps prosecutors, a psychiatrist, who would testify that George Floyd's behavior, not letting officers put him in the back of their squad, was consistent with someone who had claustrophobia, anxiety, and a panic attack. I think the court is 100% is correct. They either both come in or neither come in, in the context of the emotional state of Mr. Floyd. The defense is doing a, a full-on trial of George Floyd, who's not on trial, but, but that is what they're doing. There are now 12 jurors seated with just two alternates left to go. So there's also the potential that by the end of the today or by the end of the day, we could have a full jury. All right, Jennifer, we'll be watching that very closely. Thank you. So the judge expected to make those decisions around 815 this morning. We will carry that live here on care 11. We'll also have a live blog and gavel to gavel live video stream. Just head over to care 11.com or download the care 11 app on your phone or tablet to watch live anytime. We are following breaking news out of Seattle this morning. Police say someone shot an employee at a spa overnight in an attempted robbery. They're expected to be OK. Police are searching for two suspects. Officials want you to know this shooting is not connected to the deadly spa shootings in the Atlanta area earlier this week. And today, President Biden and Vice President Harris heading to Atlanta. The trip was supposed to be a chance to tout their COVID rescue plan, but instead, They'll meet with Asian American leaders to talk about the shooting, which killed six Asian women and the ongoing threats against their community. Sunrise is live tracking all of your reaction to a new story about social distancing in schools. So we've all heard that six feet is the safe distance apart to help curb the spread of COVID-19. And that six foot rule has been one of the biggest challenges when it comes to schools reopening. Now a new report says just three feet is safe. A study was published in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases. It looked at schools in Massachusetts where three foot guidelines have been used since October. The study found masked students can be seated as close as three feet with no increased risk to them or teachers. School officials in Danville, Indiana echoed those results, saying kids have been three feet apart for months with no uptick in cases. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is now exploring this idea as well. But teachers in Massachusetts are saying not so fast, arguing that they've already agreed in their contracts to the six foot requirement. The executive director of the National Superintendents Association says he expects even more states, though, to move in the three foot rule in the coming weeks, saying schools could bring back 75 percent of kids under this three feet rule. Our Sunrisers, though, they had a lot to say about we had hundreds of comments here on this. A lot of people though, like Carrie here writing anyone who thinks kids are even three feet apart in school is frankly delusional. And then there's others like Robert, who's a sub and says most schools he works in have the three foot rule. He writes in part six feet when possible is more ideal, but it's not always practical. Now to read more about the study, we do have it posted right now at care11.com. But one thing we've all learned from this pandemic, Chris, is that there's always things changing with it. Yeah, and kids have been shown to be more resilient, but I mean, how do you keep those kids three feet apart right. at, like at lunch and recess, right? I, I mean, they really have to be monitored. Gia? Now here's a look at some other top stories in your morning rush. A Ramsey County Sheriff's deputy is in the hospital with multiple injuries after a carjacking suspect hit him in Arden Hills. Police were chasing the vehicle Wednesday night when it ran a red light, hit the deputy and his squad car, which burst into flames. The suspect was arrested and was not injured. Governor Walls has tested negative for COVID-19. He went into quarantine this week after one of his staff members tested positive for the virus. The governor's office says he will take another test later since COVID isn't always 
voice detected right away. The U.S. House has passed a pair of immigration bills. First bill would provide a pathway to citizenship for dreamers, undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. at a young age. And the second bill would give farm workers and their families a chance to earn legal status because of their work. The bills are not expected to pass in the Senate. And the Minnesota Wild took a brutal beating by the Colorado Avalanche. The team lost 5-1 to one late last night. The two teams match up again tomorrow afternoon. And that is your Friday Morning Rush. Guy, Friday one thing weather. Yes, happy Friday. Here's your Friday forecast. These are your high temperatures. Upper 40s for Alexandria down at Ortonville. St. Cloud 50. Twin Cities getting in the mid-50s. Beautiful day ahead. Gorgeous. And this, unfortunately, not how you want to start your Friday morning commute. We had a fender bender on the stretch of 494 and Highway 100, blocking this right shoulder, not causing any slowdowns at this time. Time now to connect the dots where we make sense of the news. A newborn baby girl in Florida appears to have instant protection against COVID-19. Her doctors say she is the first baby in the world born with antibodies to fight the virus, and it's all thanks to her mom. Let's connect the dots. A new study says the Florida mother is a frontline health care worker who received her first dose of the Moderna vaccine when she was 30 weeks pregnant. She gave birth three weeks later to a healthy baby with COVID-19 antibodies. Doctors believe the mother passed on those antibodies through the placenta, but more research needs to be done. The idea of a mom passing on protections to her baby is not new. Starting in the second trimester, a pregnant woman starts passing important disease-fighting molecules onto her fetus. This ramps up as the pregnancy goes on and is critical to helping newborns fight off infections. These maternal antibodies help protect babies until their own immune system matures and they are old enough to be vaccinated themselves. Pregnant women were not in the original trials for the Moderna and Pfizer coronavirus vaccines, a common practice in these studies, but Pfizer has announced a large-scale trial with expectant mothers, and Moderna has created a registry to track how pregnant women respond to the vaccine. Hey, that's a good thing, though. At least, you know, the baby, and we know that the baby can be protected now. Yeah, and like we said earlier, things are always changing mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to COVID, for sure. Hey, Peloton owners, check your inboxes, a mass email the company CEO just sent out and why every parent needs to read it. And the Twin Cities first summer concert series is set. We give you a sneak peek at the local legend taking the stage. Plus, going back to the office after working from home during the pandemic. You've done your job incredibly productively over the last year, but how you will be able to do that in the future. Coming up, tips on managing your stress over returning to the office and how to talk to your boss about staying remote. And pull out your phone and let us know what you're planning for the first day of spring. All you have to do is use the hashtag Sunrisers. We're going to check in with you after the break.